Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rants, powered by Come On Now, the podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shoma, and I got another rant for you. Thank you all for jumping on live with us tonight. Another great night. Over 500 people in the room. Please be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Follow us on all of our social media platforms. Let's just jump in on this topic right now, because I did mention this also tonight in our uh, live session with uh, the great, the great, great Ben Daniel. Call it Spade, Spade. And I will keep it a buck, because that's what I do. I think I'm going to make that my slogan. Keeping it a buck, because that's what I do. But let's talk about this. Chicago Sky lose today, 79-74 to the Minnesota Lynx. Camilo Cardoso leads the link, the sky with 22 points on 7 of 11, shooting 8 of 8 from the free throw line. And uh, all the talk is about Angel Reese and her rebounding numbers and her fluffery. I will tell you this right now. Camilo Cardoso needs out of Chicago. I don't know where Camilo Cardoso should go. I don't know who would offer her. I'm sure there are lots of teams that would offer players to get her, but she needs out. She is never going to be the player she can be playing for the Chicago Sky. The franchise is run like a train wreck. It's a disaster. It is toxic. There are problems left and right. Players demanding trades. Marina Mabry demands one. She's gone. Dana Evans demands one. She's not, but she sits on the bench marinating there and not playing. And then you have Kennedy Carter, who's having her situations where she's sick, not sick, COVID, not COVID. Who the hell knows what? But she's missed now three straight games due to COVID. It, does she have COVID? I don't know. Maybe she does. I don't care. But she's missed three straight three straight games. There were thoughts that she might play on Friday. So if she there were thoughts that she might play Friday, why didn't she play today? Who knows? I don't really. It doesn't really matter to me. What matters is the fact that Camila Cardoso is wasting her career. She's in her rookie season, and she is ignored because she's playing next to Angel Reese. And obviously the injury early on, which kept her out of some games to start the season, clearly played a part in why she's not being utilized the way she should be as the actual number three pick in the draft, which was four slots ahead of Angel Reese. Camila Cardoso is a better post player than Reese. It's not close. It is not even a conversation. She shot about 60% from the field last year at South Carolina, leading the Gamecocks to the national championship. She was the reason the Gamecocks won the national championship. Keeping it a buck, Camilla Camilla Cardoso was the why for South Carolina against Iowa in the national championship. She was just too damn big. They could not do anything with her. They couldn't. Iowa had no answer in that national championship game against South Carolina. None. Zero answer. In that game, Camila Cardoso goes for 7 for 14, 15 points, 17 rebounds. She dominated the glass. They won, they won the rebounding ma- matchup 51 to 29. Dominated. Chloe Kitts also had uh, 10 rebounds. But Camila Cardoso was an immovable force that could not was a, a force that could not be moved, not by anyone on Iowa. And Caitlin Clark for her for her that night, she was on fire in the first half, first quarter of that game, and then she went completely dry. Like the well went dry, and you know after the after the first quarter for the most part, she had a really rough shooting night, ten of twenty eight. She still had 30 points, eight rebounds, five assists. And they still were in the game in the fourth quarter. But it, if she needed to be like the Caitlin Clark that she was the year earlier against them in the in the final four when she went absolutely bonkers against um, South Carolina. Uh, let, me, let me confirm what she had that year. What did she have in that game? I think she had 41. Uh Iowa final four. What you have in that game? Yeah, she had 41. She had 41 year, 41, eight and six the year before. That's the type of game they needed from her that night, and they didn't get it. It is what it is, and they got zero points off their bench, which clearly didn't help. But 
Camila Cardoso was the why for South Carolina. She was the reason. She was the reason. No one else. Yes, there was uh, the play of Tessa Johnson off the bench. She had a great game with 19 points. But the reason was Camila Cardoso. So what happens with Chicago? They run offense through Angel Reese. Angel Reese takes five more shots per game than Camila Cardoso. Camila Cardoso's confidence has been battered in Chicago. It's been battered. She's been mentally abused. I like that. But she's been mentally abused when it comes to her confidence with the Chicago Sky. She should be getting 15 shots per game. The ball should be dumped into her. If you're a team based on post presence, the ball should be dumped into her literally every other time down the floor at some point. The high low action that should be run with the Chicago Sky is from Reese or Harrison into Cardoso, not the other way around. Cardoso cannot be the one dumping it in to people, particularly Reese, who can't finish. Cardoso finishes at a level far greater than Reese. Cardoso right now in the WNBA is shooting 50.8%. Reese is shooting 38.6%. This is a no-brainer. But yet, Reese takes 12.1 shots per game, and Camila Cardoso takes 7.4. Camila Cardoso gets randomly pulled out of games in situations where you're sitting here saying, what's going on? Why are you pulling her out of the game? That makes no sense. But it happens every single game. Camila Cardoso plays six minutes less per game than Reese. Five and a half minutes, whatever. Why that is, don't know, as they as Cardoso averages less fouls per game than Reese. So it's not like she's living in foul trouble. But it's one of those things where Carmilla, Camilla Cardoso is at that point where I cannot see what would benefit her by staying with the Chicago Sky. Because Angel Reese is not going anywhere. The Chicago Sky are proving to you that they are building this freaking team around Reese. They will sacrifice the wins to fluff the numbers. They don't care. They've proven it. Trading Marina Mabry midseason was absolutely insane. If you're trying to win, there's no way in hell – you're making that trade of Marina Mabry for Rachel Bannum and Mariah Jefferson. No chance. It's a horrible trade. To lose trade, you're going to lose your best shooter, and then you're going to lose games. And since the break, they're one in seven. It's obvious what's going on there. It's a tank job. And then Teresa Weatherspoon jumps on the tank job board, and she's tanking along with them. She... She keeps running offense through Reese. People say, oh, she's not doing that. Yeah, she is. I'm not saying she's doing it every play. But there's not a play ever that should be scripted for Angel Reese offensively in the block. Ever. Ever. Cardoso, yes. Based on positioning. If Cardoso is deep enough to the rim, this is where Angel Reese can be very, very helpful to her. You're on the opposite side. You're in the dunker's position. You can't dunk, but you're in that dunker's position, which means Cardoso goes up for a layup. If she misses, you are there for a rebound and a potential putback. Now, you might miss the putback. I don't know. Or you catch the rebound and kick it back out and let's run the offense again. But that's where your benefit lies, is on that dunker spot where you can help Camilla Cardoso if she misses. Look, I'm not saying Angel Reese should never take a shot. I'm saying that the shots should not come out of offensive sets. They should come off of garbage buckets, fast break. Now, we've seen her miss tons of fast break layups. We've seen her miss tons of miss tons of layups on, on putbacks. Nonetheless, that's where her shooting should come. And you know what? If you miss one, you need to kick the ball back out. But Cardoso is the better offensive player. She's the better defensive player. I don't care what anyone says. Did you see what she did to Asia Wilson? Did you see what she did to Leah Boston? She sucked the life out of both of those players. She was swatting Angel Wilson's shot all over freaking Chicago. She was swatting her shot everywhere. She was busting up Leah Boston, too. Leah Boston couldn't get a shot up over her for the most part. So her size and her ability and knowledge and the ability to just keep her hand up because when she keeps her hand up, no one's getting a shot over her. 
Not in the post, because these women can't jump. Not to where they would need to. Not to the level that they would need to to get the shot over her. Over her. So yeah, I. You you have a defensive. She blocked. She had five block shots on the Asia Wilson. Like that's that's crazy. That's a that's a large number of block shots. She leads the team in block shots naturally. She's the biggest player on the team. But this is not even a con. This is this has become a situation where I don't see any way that Camila Cardoso is going to benefit playing on this team. I don't know where she goes. I don't know who she should demand a trade. She needs to dem- at the end of the day, she needs to demand a trade. Do I know if they're going to trade her if she demands it? I have no idea. But this is where her agent needs to start doing his or her job and start putting out feelers. Because her in Chicago is not going to work. Not if they continue to do what they're doing. Could they change their entire offense next year? It's possible. I wouldn't trust it, though. I wouldn't trust that they're going to all of a sudden decide that we're going to make Camila Cardoso the focal point of the post game and have Angel Reese play, you know, be the top, the, 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 the entry pass on the high low or playing from the dunkers position or anything like that. I don't know. I, I don't know if you can trust that because what you've seen this year is a complete dis- desecration of the integrity of basketball with how they played these games, especially in the second half of the season. Well, Hell, the whole that whole streak, a large portion of that streak where they kept losing. All that said, I think Camila Cardoso has been completely misused on this team, and she is suffering on the court for it. And if she doesn't demand a trade soon enough, her career might not last very long. Because Camila Cardoso averaging eight points or nine points and eight rebounds. I mean, I guess, but that's not what you want from a third pick in the draft. You need 15 and 10 from her. That's what you need. You need 15, 15, 17 and 10, I'd say, because no one can stop her. So it makes no sense that she's not getting the ball in the paint more. That's just my opinion. I, I think that she needs to demand a trade and demand it now. Whether it happens now, it can't happen, obviously, now. But in the offseason, I'd be saying, get me the fuck out of here. Can't do this. Let me know your thoughts. What do you think of the idea of Camila Cardoso demanding a trade? Leave it a comment. Be sure to like, subscribe, and follow, and ring that bell. Share this video, and hit up all, hit up all of our social media platforms. Appreciate you. Love you. Come on now.